Well, new polls out showing Biden's disapproval rating sits at 56 percent. Listen to what the White House had to say about that. Roll tape. He's at a 56 percent disapproval, the highest of his presidency, and 74 percent of registered voters say they have major or moderate concerns about the president's age and mental fitness. How troubling is that? I get the polling that you're laying out. I get that, but we we can't we can't be focused on that. 37 percent approval. I hear you, but it is. Look, our focus is going to be on. Um, on what we can do to continue to deliver for the American people. Polls are polls, right? They are going to be all over the place. And Ben Dominich joins me now. Ben, great to see you. Thanks for being here. You know, more and more, this administration, particularly from, from the, uh, the White House spokesperson, seems to be just ignoring reality, whether it's, it's Biden's uh, poll numbers or the economy, where they ignore what everybody knows to be true, they ignore that that exists, or the border crisis. I mean, how much longer can you ignore reality? Well, it's funny how Karine Jean-Pierre framed that as uh, being, you know, polls being all over the place. Well, Earth to Kareen, they're not all over the place. They're very consistent. They yeah. show how much concern there is, not just among Republicans, but among independents and among Democrats about uh, the fitness of this president to continue into a second term. Uh, very uh, high levels of skepticism that we've only seen grow over the past year. Uh, and I think that the fact that these polls are all moving consistently in one direction, and that's heightened levels of concern, shows the White House that they haven't done a good job of allaying any of the fears of the American people, that this is a president who is personally not just out of touch, uh, but incapable, perhaps, of finishing out another term. We saw the news, uh, for instance, just this morning, that the White House has purposefully started to make the president uh, wear more sneakers because they're concerned that he's going to have another tripping episode, that he's going to fall down and, and potentially hurt himself in a way uh, that could prevent him from being able to function on the mm. campaign trail. Yeah. That's not the kind of conversation you want to have no. about a commander in chief. Well, of course, uh, with the new decorum rules, I think it would go in place with uh, what John Fetterman is wearing. But absolutely, <laughs> I, I shouldn't joke about that. Uh, you know what? It sort of reminds you of the White House attitude is is what happened in the final days of Richard Nixon. You don't remember? I do. I'm old enough to remember. There was this denial of reality right up until the time that that Richard Nixon finally resigned. He realized he couldn't go any further. You know, Ron Ziegler was the White House spokesperson at that time. He said the same kind of stuff, just ignoring reality. And then, of course, Nixon resigned. Do you think that it's possible? Of course, the president may not resign, but they don't come out and say, I'm not going to run again. So here's the thing. I think that, you know, Joe Biden has worked for so long uh, over the course of more than three decades to get to the, this point, to get to the presidency. Uh, and I think that he's not going to be someone who walks away from that uh, position uh, without having it sort of pulled away from him. Democrat elites are kind of exercising their last opportunity at this moment, I think, over the past month mm. to try to give him a path out. You saw that in the David Ignatius Washington Post column. You see it in the polling that has been released that shows him, you know, potentially losing to Donald Trump. You see it, I think, in, in some of the promotion of California Governor Gavin Newsom by a lot of folks who would like to yeah. have, you know, him potentially as the candidate. But I don't think you're going to be able to do this except by okay. ripping it away from the president. I, I got to rush you because we only have time for one more. It's got to be quick. But another person avoiding reality seems to be Senator Menendez, who came out and said mm -hmm. he's going to fight to the end. Well, a lot of people say he's already reached the end. Here, here was his, the, the New York Post takes a kind of umbrage at his suggestion that he had all that money because of his Cuban roots, uh, that he, that's, that's what Cubans did uh, before uh, Fidel closed the place down, and he's worried about the same thing happening. Is it time for the senator to leave office, and will he? It's, it's past time for him to leave office, but he's taken the same lesson that every other senator uh, really took from the Al Franken experience, which is Franken regrets oh, that's right. ever stepping down in the face of that challenge. Uh, you know, and I think in this case, Menendez basically feels like I can get through this. I can hang on and no one's going to be able to push me out. He's hoping for a divided field that allows him to win uh, that Senate nomination once yeah. again. And, you know, frankly, uh, I think that there's a possibility that that happens. Jeez, that Al Franken analogy is spot on. I'd forgotten about that. Ben, great to see you. Thank you very much. Great Appreciate it.